what's going on guys blaze here uh i know it's been a quite a while since i posted a video um yeah i've got kind of an apology i know i've only got a few uh you know subscribers but like i don't know it was starting to get to be a little a little extra so but i do uh kind of have a little uh things going on which i do want to kind of get back into it um so i'm gonna get into that a little bit later in this video um on the last video i posted which i'm gonna actually post soon it should have been shortly before this not a month or two ago but i got my rear mirror replaced unfortunately it costs like freaking 2300 bucks to do but you know how it is they get uh they get drivers when you're out in the middle of nowhere and you have to get it done legally or else you can't go nowhere etc etc so they're gonna charge unfortunately i did not get the beacon replaced um i still got it in the truck and honestly i'm not too worried about it because like i said i'll get into that here in a little bit uh further down the road but either way right now i have a little bit of time to myself and this is probably going to be the last time my baby my pater belt uh is going to be filmed so but anyways for now take advantage of a little time off and i am going to go moto camping kind of but it's so far away that like i'm not gonna ride my bike because it'll take a lot of extra time and stopping every hundred miles for fuel um shade tree surgeon a youtuber one of my favorite youtubers in biking um or motorcycle you know biker is running a uh charity camp out this weekend and uh it's in just outside of tampa florida so i am going there for the weekend get my mind totally off of trucking worry about that when i get back and we gonna have some good times man she's a beauty Oh man, I'm surrounded by freaking truckers, man. Truckers everywhere. Why are there truckers everywhere, man? I can't believe these guys, man. Truckers everywhere. <laughs> well, good thing is, is I'm still a trucker and I'm still gonna be a trucker. Um, <clears throat> the situation right now with me is that my truck, as y'all know, is heavy haul spec truck. I was getting sub five miles per gallon, usually around it fluctuated 4.5 to 4.8. Sometimes I've seen it, I've seen it hit five before, but very terrible gas mileage. Um, on top of that, I the, the when I got hired on, I came across a nice deal. I had someone someone basically called in a favor for my I, either way i was getting paid real good and there was times where the truck itself like the main goal for my dispatch was to have that truck break even and as we all know freight's not the best right now so uh it started getting to the point where the truck was losing money and something's gonna happen and as was told to me they're losing more money keeping me out there than if the truck were to sit uh the truck is on a lease agreement and they have to hold on to the truck till i don't know when but like i said if you're gonna lose x amount of money anyways might as well lose the least x amount so uh either way they're pulling me out of that truck um, right now I'm kind of in limbo, but I'm entertaining offers. Uh, I've got like the two main offers I got right now 
well two and a half maybe three depends on how this how this third one turns out I'll talk about um, one of them is a guy who's leased on with my company who has trucks that need drivers and that would be a deal to where I would be still kind of with the company but not really because I'll be underneath another owner op and you know my pay will be going through him and everything but I'll still have the same dispatcher um, but I don't know how much he's gonna pay I've already talked to him a little bit he said he is willing to do a percentage deal and I'm trying to figure out what that percentage might be uh, I don't know if I'm gonna do that because one of my really good friends already drives for him and I've heard some good and bad and I don't know I've got to weigh everything out like I mean I, I'm serious I'm at a point to where it's like I got to do all my pros and cons of all these offers and come out with the best things best for me um, another offer is and I'm actually gonna hear from them here in a little bit um, while I'm on the road is the owner of the company that I'm working for I've talked to him so I eventually want to get an owner up I eventually want to buy my truck right now I can't because a I don't necessarily have that much money yet and B right now is all, still not the best time to be buying trucks hopefully that'll change soon hopefully like if I'm not if you know people are saying you know the first after the first quarter next year you know used trucks will be semi affordable I don't know we'll we'll find out we'll cross that bridge when it gets there right now I just need to get back to work um, but anyways back to this other offer I had mentioned something about to, to the owner of my company about going owner op renting not leasing so no agreement just break off at any time I want to renting a rider truck and him you know taking all everything out of my check as an owner op with my company uh they're getting 80 uh, owner ops are getting 80 percent so if i get the 80 percent and then they deduct my rental fees and all that other stuff it'll be just like i'm an owner op without having to buy a truck uh i know rentals can be expensive but and I mean, it's not an ideal thing to do, but it's, it, I'm in a situation where I have to do something. So, uh, whenever I'm going to, I'm going to get a three-way call from my dispatcher and the owner of the company, uh, to talk more about that. Um, the other kind of option right now is the person who brought me on with this company Oh, there's actually a lot more to this story that I will get into here in just a second. But first, uh, they're talking about, hey, I've got other companies, other owner operators, and owner, other things that I would love to put you at because I know that you're a good worker. And I know that you can run the miles and you're a lot better than just throwing some rando that I barely know their work, work ethic or whatnot. So I'm waiting for that person to get back with, get, get, get back with me with some numbers as far as pay and stuff and, and offers so but there was a big something that happened on the backside of all this and this is getting back into what I said I'll talk about later here about it a minute ago um, the person who brought me on to this company and my dispatcher were really close they're good best good really good friends um, both of them told me whatever happens if my company if it, whatever happens stick with me I'll keep you working I'll keep you making money both of them said that well there was a falling out with the person who brought me on with this company and my company slash my dispatcher and the person who brought me on the company is a little longer with the company now I've done all I can to ignore all of the, the BS about who said what what happened why is this happening or whatnot because I got something bigger going on I'm not driving and I need to be so I'm trying to stay out of all the drama between two different people that I'm close to 
that have gone separate ways that have both promised good things if I stick with them before in the past. They said that both of them said that before in the past and both of them say it now too. So I, there's a little bit of a moral dilemma because now I've got to make a choice. And I know that, uh, you know, networking is one of the, you know, real strong in this industry and you know it's who you know if you know the right people to get into the right places and doing the right things you know you're going to get better further down the line so i don't know i don't know what i'm going to do all i know is i'm going to take all like right now like i said before i'm clearing my mind of all of the trucking stuff with the exception of this phone call that i'm going to get here in a little bit uh clear my mind of all this trucking stuff and uh yeah, spending some time with my baby. Um, I don't know if you can see out the rear view, but I took the backrest from the driver's side. It's easily detachable. So while I'm driving, I figured I might as well just take it off just for just to be safe. Um, what I'm doing right now, I didn't think I was going to because I have time off in a week to go see Slaughter to Prevail. And that was supposed to be my home time, but this happened, so I'm downtime. Um, there is a YouTuber, I, I think I mentioned him earlier in the, the back when I was at my truck. Um, there are actually there's a handful of YouTubers, biker YouTubers from Florida and generally around the Tampa area. And uh they're all have good affiliation with a wonderful charity that I'm all about, that I donate to, and that they have, and they have like raffles for bikes and stuff like that. Um, but they're having what they call the weirdo camp out this weekend in Tampa, and that's where I'm going. I would have rode my bike, like I said, but that would be too involved and I wouldn't get there quick enough or whatever. But uh, um, basically we're gonna be camping out. I'm gonna, there's a lot of YouTubers, so I'm pretty sure they're all gonna be GoPro friendly, so. I'm gonna get some footage of that. I don't know how long this video is gonna be. It might be a little bit because it's gonna be all weekend. I don't know, we'll find out. But uh, uh, yeah, so about this charity, it's called Forgotten Angels. They're a wonderful organization. What they do essentially is they take boys that have aged out of the foster system, the foster system with the government, um, the foster family receives X amount of dollars per month to foster these children and it has become a point to where they the human beings have become like a commodity they uh, they put three or four or five of them in a room to live and you know, they're in this they're all sharing a room the more people they get the more amount of money that per month they get from the government to, to take care of these kids and once they turned 18 there's a, a huge portion of them that are just given a trash bag and said to put all their belongings in it and they gotta go. They end up being homeless. Um, and since they're more of a commodity and less of a relationship, a lot of these kids haven't had uh, the opportunity to learn the, the, the certain things that adolescents should learn from their parents. Um, so, the main people at this uh, uh, organization, Dave and Cindy, they consider them mom and dad. And Dave is an excellent dude. He shows up on my my Josh's channel, which is the Shade Shoe Surgeon, shows up on his channel all the time, talking about the charity, uh, the, co the, the place we're going to, the property that the party's gonna be at and everything. And uh, he teaches them life skills he teaches them how to drive if they haven't they they just turned 18 if they haven't and the, the good thing about him is he's a biker he teaches the kids how to drive a manual transmission car and teaches them how to drive a motorcycle like those are the main things that he wants to get i, I, I just think that's phenomenal like keep people keep people on two wheels i love it love it love it love it but uh, um, I get kind of emotional when I start talking about this uh, charity, but they currently have a raffle going on. Um, it's like a three prize raffle of stuff that was donated to the organization. 
um, there are two 19 XX I really don't know the year but they're 40 year old 40 something year old motorcycles Honda Silver Wings that uh, Shay Tree and his niece Shay Lisi who is also has her own YouTube channel and I watch both of them they uh, uh, had these two bikes donated to them from uh, someone in Portland Oregon and they took these old ratty Hondas that are a couple you know a handful of decades old and rode them 4,000 miles from Portland Oregon to Tampa Florida that's why I love watching their channels is because while I'm sitting there at a truck stop in my little coffin well, I don't have a coffin sleeper but it feels like a coffin because of the small walls you get back there and you lay down for the day I watch them and it's like it takes me back home it takes me back behind two wheels while I'm out there on 18 um, so either way I'm kind of just rambling now about them and because I'm just so fascinated by with what they do uh, but either way I'm headed out there right now to have an awesome weekend and I am going to bring y'all along with me I literally just got done recording that last clip I just wanted to add one more thing um, so obviously this is gonna be a bit of a crossover uh, show uh, crossover video from eight wheel uh, from 18 wheels to two wheels um, but I do have I have been down for quite a while like y'all already know um, I do have a bunch of footage from before now of riding that truck so the vlogs I'm gonna there's no point in wasting that footage I might as well put them together and keep the vlog chronologically in order so even though you're getting this before that that actually happened before and I'm still gonna be posting videos from that truck and I'm also gonna be keeping up keeping you up to date with what's going on um, so yeah I just I just wanted to kind of straighten that out how you know talking about this truck being gone and then have a bunch of vlogs I'm also not probably not going to so the way I did it before was every single load I was recording and uploading every single load but that's just I mean just to take a little bit of this the, the editing away from me I'm just I'm just gonna you know random loads that I think will be interesting like I, I wish I would have got this last load I hauled some hay from uh, uh, Minneapolis to Oklahoma yes hay 875 miles why are you gonna haul hay that long isn't hay made everywhere but anyways that's I didn't record that that's something else whatever whatever anyways I just want to let y'all know that uh, uh, I'm gonna keep I'm gonna I'm gonna be putting up videos from footage that I've already had that has been sitting for months so Well, I've made it here to the weirdo camp out. Everybody's got tents. Here's my tent with two cases of beer, of course. Let me close that up. Um, I know it's early and from my understanding, there may be a bunch of other people showing up. There's my bed. But I'm gonna take y'all on a little tour around this place. I haven't even been around this place yet, so. Let's see what we can't find around here. Miss Dave and Cindy, they are getting married tomorrow. There are a lot of bikes out here and tents. Looks like there's some tiny homes and stuff, probably for the kids. There's some tents back there. Looks like they're setting up a stage.
like that may be the congregation area. I see a lot of chairs. I'm not going to drive through there because I don't want to get in too many people's way. So I'm going to circle on the outside. Look at that speaker system on that bike, man. So yeah, it looks like this is where all the good stuff's gonna happen. So this is the Forgotten Angel compound. It's a pretty nice little place, man. I'm not sure exactly where David and Cindy live, but. I should go that way I think that's to the back side of where that stage was being built so I'm gonna cruise back around back over to the uh, my little campsite so and it's already starting to shape up to be a pro oh shit there's Josh from shade there's shade tree surgeon right there so I'm gonna start cruising back over to my little neck of the woods know if I should cruise back that way because when I was going around earlier when I was trying to find a my bike parking place where I, you know when I pulled my bike around there's probably two packed with tents for me to get uh, all the way up in there but but yeah either way it seems like it's gonna be a good fun weekend Unfortunately, I didn't bring any pants except for the ones that I fucking just got dirty, so I don't know if I'm going to suffer from burnt leg from this exhaust. But yeah, seems like a good fun time for a bunch of debauchery and uh, hopefully, like I said, it should get really busy tonight. I don't know. We'll find out. All right, let's go do some exploring. Um, right now they're getting set up for Dave and Cindy's wedding. Looks like there's a line there for food. Yeah, check out old boy's passenger. <laughs> nice. Got a merch booth from some sh nice little Indian. That's nice. I may get uh, DMCA for that uh, song in the background, but whatever. The audio system on that one. So this bike right here, this is the knucklehead that Shade Tree Surgeon picked up in Oregon in uh, uh, the Oregon and uh, drove it all the way down here 4,000 miles got had to tie up the push rods with the wire 
lost the head so he had to plug in plug it so he didn't have he had oil uh, squirting on him and shit it's pretty cool well those mishaps aren't pretty cool but it's that it's cool actually seeing that bike um the raffle tonight is going to be on or tomorrow on this bike and there's another bike just like it that also was picked up in portland oregon and driven by shade tree and his uh his niece shay lisi four thousand miles and on a 650 so they're gonna raffle the two bikes that are like that and uh this humvee over here this little get together has been a blast so many good people so much good food a lot of good beer i'm gonna cut through right here There he is, right there. Cooking some shit up. Hello, sir. How you doing? How you doing? Excellent, excellent, excellent. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do some eating tonight, and then. Uh, this other backside of the uh, campgrounds I've actually spent a lot of time at because I got a group of buddies that are parked over there by that green top tent. So another VTX, nice. Ah, uh, bikes, 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 and more bikes. pushing cars in the lake <laughs> Bikes are getting packed up. Cars are getting packed up. The crowd is starting to thin a little bit and uh, it's been a badass weekend. Oh, <sighs> I just woke up. I'm about to hop on my bike and ride somewhere to get some breakfast. So, and then I got the long journey home, 1100 miles. Well, I'm getting done slowly but surely. The place is kind of emptying out a bit. Um, the man, Josh here, cooked us breakfast this morning. I'm just sitting here chilling out with my bike, waiting for things to get uh, emptied out a little bit more. And then I can start getting everything loaded up and out of the way. Um, I won't necessarily be in anybody's way but I would be the least in people's way later. Well, hello there. <laughs> Josh, Shade Tree Surgeon, bringing it in. Oh, oh, I enjoyed the camp out. It's been the funnest. And uh, man, I if I get the chance to come out again, I definitely will. Fucking better? Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking better, dude. <laughs> once you come once, now you're in it. You know, yeah. It, yep, yep, yep. <laughs> Greatest guy ever, man. So I'm literally just sitting here chilling by my bike, uh, waiting for things to thin out. That was epic. 
I didn't plan that. He just came up and saw I was recording. I told him I had I had a, a, a trucking channel, but of course when he came up, I pointed at the camera so he knows, you know. But anyways, it was fucking epic. Definitely recommend. They're gonna have another one in March and another Halloween one in October. And uh, it's for a good cause. I don't know if you can see the diff distance. They got the, uh, the tiny homes. There's one right back there, one right back there. And there's a couple up front and there's another one in the back and then there's one more back there where uh, the kids stay at, so. But anyways, uh, I'll catch y'all on the road here in a little bit. Well, that concludes uh, my weekend at the uh, Weirdo Campout, Shade Tree Surgeon, the Forgotten Angels, Dave and Cindy Wedding. I mean, there's just so much in the past weekend, and I couldn't, like, I, the last thing I was worried about was grabbing my camera. I apologize, but I had so much fun. I can't wait till the next one. Um... Now that all that's over with, I need to get my head back on track, figure out <clears throat> what's going on. I, I, I mentioned something about hearing from my dispatcher on the way down, but I didn't, which... Hello, this thing on? I, uh, my camera died. Um, as I was saying, I was told uh, that my dispatcher was gonna give me a shout on the way down to kind of give me, you know, talk with the owner of the company that I'm working with about working out some deal on some other truck or whatnot. Unfortunately, they didn't get in touch with me, which I can't complain because I already told them this is going to be my, you know, take my mind totally off trucking, go enjoy myself and then come back. So I should be able to find out here in the next few days. Um, Know what's going on i still got to go and empty my truck out and take it to somewhere to drop it off but uh, uh anyways well that's this is current somewhat and uh now i'm gonna go back through my footage and continue on with my vlog series uh pretty much where i left off um so yeah Y'all have a good one, guys.